Yo, what is going on guys? Jack here and a quick disclaimer before we get into today's video that if you missed the previous episode go check it out episode 11 was an epic end of season live com go check that if you haven't already other than that let's get into today's episode yo what is going on guys Jack here and welcome to episode 12 of the posh push here with Peterborough in the Sky Bet Championship hopefully you guys are good if you missed last episode it was epic and of course we did get promoted, guys. We won the league. We are in the championship for our first season. This is where the real challenge begins. Quite how our season's going to go, I've got to be honest, I have no clue. I've made some signings I'm very happy about. But as you can, guys can see here, if you missed last episode, or of course if you ignored my disclaimer at the start of this episode, we won the league on the last day of the season. It was a crazy way to cap off what was a really, really good first year. And I'm going to be looking to build on that this season. So anyway, quick look at the transfers first and foremost, obviously moving up into the championship, got to rebuild, got to look to kind of, I guess, build up a side that's really going to be capable of challenging in this league. I believe we've done that, certainly to a certain extent. There's no, not been too many major changes to the squad this year. It's very much been a case of just kind of spending wisely, I guess. Uh, on the outs, as you guys can see, we made £5.14 million. On the ins... Uh, we spent 5.79 million, so only a £600,000 swing. Our wage budget was also increased quite healthily, and we actually have a fair bit of that left over. So if I do want to get in a few more players, that's an option. And we've also managed to generate 3.7 million in the bank in terms of funds. So we've had a very good um, kind of, I guess, summer period. On top of that, if I go to facilities here, uh, we've got our stadium being expanded, and our youth category has also been upgraded to a category two, uh, which is of course the second highest you could have. So that's another fine sign of progress and uh, on top of that because of uh, you know those changes I think it's if I go to overview here uh, you can see our youth facilities are currently being upgraded and will be done by November of this year but anyway that's now sidetracked me way across from where I was meant to be covering uh, which was the transfer history so the, we made two major sales Charlie Horton the first Charlie Hall Horton was a player who when I came to the club a lot of you guys recommended I kept hold of um, he's 19 he's an okay player don't get me wrong a good young prospect in goal but Celtic came in and they were willing to pay £1.4 million for a player who at the time was valued at less than £100,000 a week. Made one appearance for me last year, didn't really impress me too much, didn't make much of a kind of improvement I guess as a player and so for Celtic to come in with 1.4 million pound it was a pretty easy decision to be make the only other big sale was Jack Payne uh, a player who was key for us last year I've sold him to Blackburn for a pretty healthy sum of money 3.7 million pound which I don't know this guy even though he's 22 uh, he was kind of peaking in terms of his potential my assistant didn't think he could improve a lot more so as a result of that I decided to cash in on him whilst I could uh, and besides that a lot of the outs here are just real kind of fringe players, players like Joe Day, who was a backup goalkeeper. Uh, you got players like Sean Brisley, uh, who was probably the biggest of the players who I've let go, but he didn't want to sign a new contract. And to be honest, given the players that we now have in the side, he's not going to get any game time. Uh, so that's the outs. Nothing too crazy going on here. But on the ins, a few players to tell you guys about. Jamie Jennings joined us from Maidstone, uh, a good non league prospect who I kind of found under the radar, I guess. Um, just a player with some potential. He doesn't have the best pace but hopefully he can kind of I guess develop that as he goes uh, kind of through his younger years I guess and the same with Scott Simpson a player who with a load of potential in the lower leagues I actually signed this guy from Chester I do believe I did Chester in the Skrill Prem where he made a handful of appearances despite his young age uh, but he's a very very good player he's 16 years old again lacks a bit of pace I'm going to be trying to get him some pace while I can uh, generally speaking in young players you find the things that I really like to look for are some decent physicals and some decent mentals the reason for that being is of course technicals are easier to improve Players are more likely to improve in technical areas, whereas mentals can be developed over time, consistent playtime, being tutored, etc. And physicals, I don't want to say it's a case of you have them or you don't, uh, but they become very tricky to improve. But we are going to make a go of it with both of those young players. Besides that, four long term signings. The first one here uh, from Chelsea was um, Mario Pasalic. I think it's Mark Pasalic. Someone tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, but this guy, really good young Croat, loads of potential this guy. 
And um, you can see he's joined us on loan. He was signed from Hadjuk last season, didn't make an appearance. But thanks to our affiliation with Chelsea and our promotion, it's opened up a few opportunities to loan in a few of this, their players. So Mario was the first of these. Uh, another player who actually joined us via Chelsea, technically, although we signed him on a free, was Jamal Blackman. Uh, he's a really good kind of young prospect keeper. Some potential. He's 20 years old. Uh, we've picked him up on a free. He was released by Chelsea. He's only on two grand a week. A fantastic little backup keeper at this level. And then the other player we signed from Chelsea again on a loan deal as part of our affiliation which I'm going to really be looking to kind of benefit from during our time in the championship we picked up Gail Kakuta uh, from Chelsea and he's joining us on a uh, a year-long loan um, as is Mario and this guy has a load of potential at this level some fantastic pace he's going to offer us something out wide I think and I don't know. He he did well at Reading last year, by and large. Seven goals, two assists, a 6.75 average rating. He's done some work at this level, and hopefully he's going to be able to do more of that for us here. So those were the minor transfers. The big one this year, Will Hughes, a familiar name to anyone who's ever played FM, by and large, I should imagine. Uh, we picked him up from Derby. Um, I did pay £5.75 million, which is more than what I wanted. Last season, Derby got relegated from the uh, Championship, as you can see they're now competing in League One. As a result, Will Hughes wanted out, as did a few more Derby players, but Will was the one I was really interested in. And I was in a fortunate situation where... Um, I put in a few bids and they wanted upwards of 10 million. I basically wasn't willing to pay that. I decided to wait it out and it got to about halfway through the transfer window and um, he was being linked with a few Premier League teams. Crystal Palace was the big one and he was basically, it came up with the news headline, you know, Hughes, plea, uh, Hughes makes plea to, I think it was Pulis still actually at Crystal Palace. And it was at that point that I was kind of thinking to myself, well, maybe they're going to lower the price. He seems really desperate to leave at this point. So we looked at him and uh, I'm pretty happy. This deal that I've now uh, agreed to sign him is actually going to be paid over an extended period of time. Um, a lot of it was over 48 months. So we're going to be losing about 1.5 million a year to Will's uh, kind of transfer, I guess, as we pay Derby back. But to me, uh, the kind of deal itself represents a great value for money signing. He was going to be very good at this level. And Will Hughes playing in the championship for a few years, uh, I'm pretty confident that's going to help his development, particularly in our very young English team. So speaking of our team... This year, uh, as I mentioned, no major changes really. You see the likes of Olcott, Zakuani, Baldwin, Briggs, Meles, Bobbingol, Friere, Sombolonga. We were able to keep hold of. Britt is an essential part of my plan, so I was very happy to keep him in the side. Um, but overall, uh, just a few extra signings, I guess, to slot in. Uh, Mario will start on the bench for us. You've got Kakuta, who's going to play out on the right wing for us, cutting inside on his left foot. Could be very beneficial. And of course, Will Hughes is also a valuable asset you can fit into a number of different positions in our team so this is how we line up for this year uh, as i mentioned hughes and uh, kakuta the real additions to this side besides that by and large the same team that you guys have seen from the previous season i'm going to put some faith in these boys here uh, our board expectation is at mid table if i do remember correctly that was what i kind of upped it to i was confident that we can achieve that our media prediction is 17th realistically i'd like to push for a top half finish maybe an outside chance of the playoffs um, as good as Peterborough's finances are by and large um, there wasn't a load of money to reinvest into the side and the Will Hughes deal was a very big one as you can see though just from my assistant's opinions he is the best player in our side so I'm hoping just having him leading the helm uh, at worst he's the kind of player who's going to develop a little bit with us and um, we set him on for a profit at best he's the kind of player who could lead us to Premier League glory down the line so that's that. In terms of the other stuff going on over the summer, I did improve my coaching setup. It was something that I wanted to do. So our goalkeeping coaching is a lot better. I got in David Coles as my new assistant. He's a very good assistant manager, despite him being also a good goalkeeper coach, which kind of doubles up quite nicely, really. But you can see here just... Um, a lot of his mental stats are very good. Um, and then man management is very good also. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. A level of discipline. Judging player ability and potential are two that I really look like 
uh, look for in my assistants just because I do like to know that my star ratings on my squad overview page are accurate. These are, of course, done up by your assistant. If your assistant has a bad judging player potential or ability, uh, these stars won't be accurate. So that was an essential thing, and David Cole basically possesses everything I look for in my assistant manager. Besides that, the coaching setup has been improved a little bit. I think we signed Nathan, uh, uh, sorry, Matthew Everington, who, of course, is fairly young in this, but uh, we've signed him. Uh, coach, he might have a little bit of potential down the line, and he's going to be focusing on the attacking area of the park. Meanwhile, uh, Gary Breen is going to be working on the tactics, ball control, and defending. So that's pretty decent. Uh, we did also kind of just upgrade our scouting setup slightly. A lot of my staff members' contracts were running out at the end of the year. I got in Paul Montgomery as a scout. He's a pretty useful one because of our relatively small budgets. I haven't been able to kind of reinvest a load of money, but we've made some kind of good progress, I guess. We've also got uh, Barry Point in here, who's another pretty good scout at this level. Um, and in terms of on the kind of other staff role front, uh, we also have Gary Fleming here. You can see he has 15 of physiotherapy. So he's a pretty useful one, and he also has 15 determination. So that works out quite well. And by and large, those staff are on relatively low money. Right, so I've said relatively a load here. So before I... Both burst a relative bubble. Um, let's get into today's game. I don't even know what a re relative bubble is. Answers on a postcard. Uh, anyway, preseason. I've not really talked about the results, but that kind of. I don't want to say they're irrelevant, but they're not too big or an issue. Uh, you can see here we have Reading to kick off the season today. In preseason, it was a pretty good preseason. We beat Everton. We drew one-one with Man City. And we only lost a one-two to Chelsea. So I'm pretty happy with our team. On the whole, and yeah, going into this first game, I'm pretty optimistic of our chances of maybe, just maybe causing a shock. Reading last year, I'm not sure where they finished. They're only predicted to finish 11th this year, so this should be a pretty a good um, test for us, I guess, coming up into this division. You can see here, Reading finished 11th, so they're a kind of team who we want to challenge this season, and that's going to be our aim. So, let's get into this. My team is already set. Apparently, I don't have enough subs I don't have a center back on the bench I don't have any center backs to bring on fortunately we've got kind of a good center back coverage from the full backs on our pitch and Boswick so I'm not too worried about that um we'll bring on Ryan and Mason as our third sub and we should be good to go here so yeah looking for a good start to our season if at all possible we are playing a Reading side that consists of a few fairly well-known players. You've got players like Karachin, uh, Akpan, Hope Akpan, of course, um, and then Paul Gremniak. Uh, I'm not sure how good he is in FM. I have a feeling he's not that great, but when Reading were in the Premier League two years ago, he was a pretty big name for them. But anyway, let's go into this game. I'm going to try and encourage my players. We're going to be playing our controlling philosophy, although I have got the counter tactic that kind of proved pretty successful last season when we called up on it on standby. So, can we make some magic happen? First game of the season. Let's get match stats on so we can see what's what. They're on the attack here. Robson Carnu. Just don't let it go in. Don't give away a penalty either. That's the last thing we need. Oh, Paul Gremniak, the guy who I say, oh, he's a, he's a little bit underrated in FM, I think, goes and scores against me. Typical. Right, I'll tell you what. I am going to switch to the counter attack, the counter tactic off the bat, I think. Not something I really wanted to do this year. I'm going to be, by and large, trying to play positive football. But given the fact we've conceded five minutes into our first game of the season at home, um, I'm going to rather hastily make a few changes here in the hope they might bring us some more joy, as it did last season, as I mentioned. So, um, switch to our counter version uh, and see if we can get anything here. Apparently, I'm on the posh counter, but it's not actually updated. Free air! That was a real chance for us. That's our first shot on uh, clear cut chance of the game. It's got a bedding, begging. Oh, thought Baldwin was going to get on the corner then as well for us. It's good signs though, we've created something there. So, according to this, oh, okay, the posh counter is now set up. Let's see if it has an impact. Hughes here, Sombolonga, Kakuta missed another chance. At least we've created two opportunities here. Looking for us to kind of get goals at home, and I feel like our home record is going to be essential this season. As I mentioned, I'd like to push for a top half finish. Mid table would be great. Kind of if we wanted to go crazily above all expectations the playoffs would be a target to kind of go for but right now we're not looking too bad for yeah whoops in a ball morrison half players can we get it back in the mixer we cannot 
Come on, Hughes. Kakuta. Put options in the middle. Gets in. Free air! Let's go. 1-1 one, one, Peterborough. We get a goal there. And looking at the stats, since that first five minutes where they had three shots and two shots on target, we've mixed things up a little bit. Granted, we did have a clear-cut chance prior to the switch. But since then, we've created some chances and free air. May I remind you who you can pick up as a free transfer at the start of the game with a goal there for us. And he's he's a player, and there's a few like this, actually. There's players like um, Briggs at fullback, um, left-back even, Briggs, free air. A few players who I brought in last year on freeze. Um, I guess you could even argue Jacob Mellis to an extent, who I signed with the kind of intentions of expecting them to do a job in the championship for us. So I'm going to be looking to those players to make a step up this year. Um, but so far, so good to be honest. It could have been a lot worse of a first half. Um, conceding early is never ideal, but um, one thing we've got to ensure this season is that we kind of put in a good string of results and try and keep morale high as and when we can. We've got a chance here, though, on the counter from a corner. A Samba longer to free air. He can't quite pick out the pass. If he picks out that pass, we are golden. But that was a good counter-attack attempt. I think it was actually Will Hughes winning the ball back for us in the centre uh, of our own area, which is good to see. The centre attack in mid, of course, we signed this year. Um, is a player who I'm going to be looking for to be a real source and, um, I guess, creative outlet for our team. I'm putting a little bit of faith in him. Of course, he was released, well, not released, he was sold by Derby to us following their relegation. So there's a little bit maybe of a point for him to prove at this level that he can do it. I, I know and I'm sure you guys know if you've played FM that Will Hughes is a fantastic player and to sign him uh, it really is an exciting acquisition, I guess, for this Peterborough side. Um, but, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do here. But I'm hoping he's going to step up to the mark. I believe he, he will. Uh, but, you know, he's going to have to prove that over the start of the season. Go on, Boswick. Asamba longer. Go on, my son. Kakuta hits the side netting. Kakuta on our right. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. He is French, but I may well not be. He has looked very, very lively for us so far this game. I'm going to make a few changes, actually. Kakuta's been a little wasteful. Uh, I'm going to move Will Hughes out onto right attack and mid and play Will Keane down the middle. I'm also going to bring on uh, Mario... Um, Pasalic for Mellis. Mellis has had a little bit of a poor game, so we'll make those changes there. 1-1 one, one would not be a bad result against Reading because they are a good mid-table team. Also, some promising signs in terms of the fact that our counter-attack tactic seems to be holding out relatively well against this Reading side. Of course, it was largely responsible for our run in the FA Cup last year against some championship teams who we were able to get wins against, like Leicester. Um, well, I guess we drew against Leicester in their Premier League, but uh, like... Uh, Wigan like Sheffield Wednesday so I've got some hopes here maybe we can get a late chance maybe even convert it a good first uh, kind of game of the season win would be amazing Will Hughes with a real chance and he's missed it five clear cut chances we've had this game we conceded in the fifth minute since then Reading have been very underwhelming but I'm a little bit disappointed with our finishing today this season, there's going to be a lot of games like this where we need to start burying goals. Asan Belonga didn't get too many of those chances. They kind of fell to midfielders today. But, um, you know, Gail Kakuta's missed a few. Will Hughes with a chance to win it at the end of the game? Of course, he is now the club's record signing. The previous record signing was Asan Belonga for 1.3 million. So signing Will Hughes for 6 million, I really was pushing the boat out there. But all in all, not a bad first game of the season. We've got something to work off there, and maybe going forward we can look to improve upon that. Right, so anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap up that this episode there. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to join you next. Um, it may well be for a game like the Newcastle game because they got relegated last season. Um, but that could be an exciting one to do. So we'll probably do that. That's on the 13th of December or September even. It's about a month ahead. So there's plenty of games in the meantime. Should give us a good idea of where we stand in the league and how I can kind of approach the rest of the season. But anyway, guys, going to wrap things up there. Of course, if you've enjoyed the episode, as always, smash the like button. Read does help me out. I do really appreciate it. Uh, if you've got any comments with regards to FM, feel free to leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.